Expo just came out with their biggest release ever, SDK 52. I'm about to show you all the updates in this SDK. But first, I would say do not upgrade. Let me repeat, do not upgrade yet. If you already have an Expo project that's 51 or below, I would say hold off on upgrading to version 52 at least for a few months. The reason can be found in the comment section. You'll notice some people are experiencing issues. They said when they upgraded to version 52, half of their images broke, their bottom sheet library got downgraded. And this was a big one that I've actually personally experienced myself. It says, I'm experiencing problems. Axios just broke on iOS. Someone else said Expo Doctor isn't working very well for them. A test I ran to see if I would get this Axios error was I set up nativenotify.com push notifications in two separate projects. I opened up one of my old projects and also created a new SDK 52 version of it. I NPM installed these packages and I put the register in and push token function at the top of both apps. And that's actually all you have to do to set up push notifications with native notify. In case you're interested, you've never heard of it before. I encourage you, it's nativenotify.com if you wanna check it out. This is the older project where I upgraded it and I did get the Axios error as well. I also changed out the functions to use fetch calls. The fetch calls were broken too, so it's not just Axios. For me at least, my fetch calls broke too. However, when I did create a brand new project using npx create expo app, then I installed native notify, imported this, put the register function here. As you can see, it worked correctly. You, it says you can now send push notifications. You successfully registered your native notify push token. And I tested out sending a push notification to myself and got it. So based on this little test, I would say there might be a good bit of things that need to be worked out, specifically when upgrading from an older version of Expo to a newer version of Expo. And I upgraded from Expo 51 to 52 and got those errors. That's why I would say you might want to wait a few months with upgrading to 52 if you already have a project. If you don't have a project yet and you're creating a new one, I would say go ahead and create the SDK 52 version. But again, I personally, if you have a project that's uh, under 52, I would not upgrade to 52 just yet. I would wait a couple months for them to work out all the bugs before upgrading to 52. And now we're going to go over the updates with SDK 52. Before I go on though, I just did want to reiterate, Native Notify works both in 52 and before 52. It's not broken. It's just when you upgrade from 51 to 52, something like that. For a lot of people, their fetch calls, Axios calls, other things just break. But like I said, it works just fine if you're creating a brand new project. The biggest thing with SDK 52 is it works with a new architecture rollout. If you haven't heard yet, React Native has completely changed their architecture. They call it the new architecture. I'll be making some videos on this soon. So if you'd like to hear more about the React Native updates, specifically regarding new architecture, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. I should be coming out with videos in the next week or two going in depth about all the changes. New architecture is enabled by default, but you can still turn it off if you don't want to use it yet. You'll notice in your app.json file, there's something called new arc enabled. It's automatically set to true, but you could change this to false if you're not ready to use the new architecture. Something they say is they recommend enabling it after upgrading from an older uh, Expo app. This is my project that I upgraded. If you go to your app.json file, you'll notice that new Arch enabled isn't there. So if you are gonna risk trying to upgrade, it's probably a good idea to come here and put in new Arch enabled true. For the new apps that you create, it's there by default. It's saying in the future in 2005, they may remove the ability to use old architecture. So eventually you should get used to the new architecture. This is a big thing for Expo Go for SDK 52 and higher. They will only support the new architecture. So this could potentially be part of what is causing these issues. I'll probably make another video where I dig deeper into this, but it says this should not impact your experience of using Expo Go. If it does, you can still opt out of using the new architecture in your project by explicitly disabling it by setting new arch enabled to false in your app.js 
JSON file and creating a development build. The issues I was having was in Expo Go specifically. So maybe the problem is I needed to upgrade to the new architecture. I'm not sure. If you do try to upgrade, I would say really focus in on this. This could be the issue with your packages. You might need to figure out how to upgrade to new architecture. Also, it says when testing your app in new architecture, make sure to run NPX Expo Doctor latest. This hopefully could fix some incompatibilities. Although some people are still reporting that Expo Doctor wasn't working for them when they upgraded. It says in some cases, you may even have to migrate to an alternative library. This again is why I'm, I don't know. It's up to you. I might would wait to upgrade to 52 unless you're building a new project. For iOS, the new minimum supported version is version 15.1. The reason for this is that's what's required for the new React Native 76. The Android Min SDK version and Compile SDK version was bumped from 23 to 24 and 34 to 35. They really emphasized in the video, they put a lot of work into the Expo video library. So they say you should use Expo video instead of Expo AV. They also, this is really cool, they added a utility to Expo video for generating video thumbnails, which may possibly replace Expo video thumbnails in the future. I am definitely gonna wanna check this out. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe. I'll try to make a video about this. So it looks like these are some of the capabilities. While the phone is in sleep mode, it looks like the video could be playing here with a thumbnail in the background, which is pretty cool. They also rewrote Expo Audio, Expo File System. They improved Expo Camera, Expo Live Photo. They also added edge-to-edge -edge layouts. It enables edge-to-edge -edge display in React Native. They updated Expo Image, which is good for loading images. It lets you preload the images into the memory. They added Expo Image Manipulator. There's a new Expo SQL Lite. So this looks like it's a replacement for React Native Async Storage. It sounds like it's a drop-in replacement, so you shouldn't have to change anything except the imports. Expo SQL Lite now supports SQL Cipher, and it supports saving SQL Lite databases to shared containers on iOS. Expo DevTools plugins now support binary payloads. Expo notifications now work with FCM v1, which Native Notify also works with v1. I'll put a link to this video in the description below. It shows up how to set up push notifications in Firebase v1. They fixed environment variables. There was a bug with it. Calendar form sheets are now launchable from Expo Calendar. Expo Fetch, it now supports download streaming, which is required for efficient handling of data streams, which is good for things like AI. There's an upgrade to React Navigation v7. React Native DevTools now replaces the JavaScript debugger introduced in SDK 47. So you'll need to be using React Native DevTools instead for debugging. And again, it's all compatible with React Native 76. This was the big release that released the new architecture. There's some big improvements to the splash screen. Dark mode is now an option with splash screens. You're able to use DOM components. DOM components are rendered inside of web views. If you're interested in learning more about this, I'm gonna make a video about this soon as well. So again, you'll wanna make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. But as you can see in the code examples they gave, they're making it a lot like you can just use React code in a DOM component and it'll work great inside of an app. And I'll put this article in the description below. They have a suggested walkthrough for upgrading to Expo 52. If you do want to try upgrading, I would suggest follow this documentation in the blog article. And those are the major upgrades with Expo 52. I'll be making a bunch of videos about all the upgrades soon. So again, you'll want to make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. I should be making at least two videos a week, mainly focused on Expo. So my goal with this channel is to really focus in on the Expo framework into the future. So if you're interested in Expo development, you'll want to make sure to subscribe. I'll be coming out with videos every week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.